In this week's video, I'm going to share how you can establish a divine realm of intimacy that makes it simple to experience God, and not just in your prayer time and prayer place, but anywhere and any time. I'm Robert Hodgkin, and this is the Supernatural Mentoring Series, where we make the supernatural simple so that you can grow in the things of the Spirit and become even more fulfilled and effective in your faith. Hey, I know you're here because you're hungry to grow in the things of the supernatural, so make sure you watch the other videos in this series. The whole series free. It's all there for you on my YouTube and Rumble channels, so make sure to watch all the other videos. And be sure to share these videos with everybody you know who wants to grow in the supernatural aspects of their Christian faith. Okay, let's jump in and talk about how you can have more God encounters. But let me ask this question. Do you want more God encounters? Sure, of course you do. We all do. And one of the keys to having more God encounters is to know that he's always there. No matter what, he's always there. Whether you're feeling him or not feeling him, he is there. Listen to just two scriptures. All through scriptures, he promises you that he's there, that he's care, that he cares, that he's with you, that he's for you. But let me highlight two. In Hebrews 13, 5, it says, for he himself has said, so this is God himself declaring, God himself promising you and declaring unto you, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's God promising you. He's always there. He always cares. He's always working. He's always for you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That means he won't abandon you. He won't turn his back on you. That means he is there always. Matthew 28, 20, he gets even more specific and says, and behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So the age has not ended, right? He has not come back on a cloud, right? The new Jerusalem has not descended yet, right? So that means Jesus himself, this is the victorious risen Lord declaring that part of what he has won, done, and given to you his son, his bride, his child, his beloved is the certainty of relationship and the certainty of his presence. So we know that we know that we know that we know the word of God is true. He is not a man as to lie. So if he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, if he says I'm with you always, then he is. But the challenge is it doesn't always look and feel that way. That's why we need to talk about first that he is always there. But let's talk about those peak experiences that you've had, the ah, where you feel his presence or you see him or sense him or his angels. When the lights are twinkling, the glory realm is wide open and you're having encounters with him. Let's talk about what those are. Those are peak sovereign encounters where he's making himself known vividly, profoundly, experientially, right? Well, one of the things we have to understand is when we're having those vivid encounters, it, it, he's not more real. We're just more aware of his realness or better. Maybe a better way to put that is when we're having those peak experiences, he is not more present we are simply more aware of his presence. That's why I wanted to start with the absolute truth that God is always there and God always cares. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He is with you always. Hebrews 13, 5 and Matthew 28, 20. That is the foundation of having more God encounters, more God experiences, knowing he's there. But what we tend to do is because as charismatics, we have those peak encounters every once in a while. We think, oh my gosh, God is here. Well, he is, but he's not more present in those moments. He's gracing us to be more aware of his presence in those moments. What he's doing with those peak experiences, he's reminding us sovereignly if, is what is what we always have. And we can always access, access that by faith. God can do anything sovereignly. He could appear behind me right now, and he could tap me on the shoulder and say, set aside, son, I'm going to take over and teach this, and I'm going to do it better than you, and he would. But he doesn't, he, 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 while he can do that sovereignly, what he really wants us to know, and one of the keys to growing, not only in God encounters and God experiences, but in any supernatural aspect of our Christian faith, is to know what 
we have and believe it, lean into it, decree it, declare it, and understand while God is, was, and always will be sovereign and can do anything he wants whenever he wants sovereignly, he wants us to catch. While that is absolutely true, he also wants us to know that he has fulfilled every sovereign promise through the finished work of the cross and the empty tomb. And we can access any or all of it by faith whenever we want. So if you want to have more God encounters, you must start by knowing that God is there. We do not have to have a sovereign encounter. When we do, enjoy it, rejoice in it. I love them. But I also know that I he has taught me how to establish this divine realm of intimacy or this realm of divine intimacy so I can simply turn my hearts and thoughts to him and begin to have experiences and encounters with him. In addition to, I left something out that's really important. In addition to the, the, the necessity of knowing the truth, knowing the truth that he is there, that he'll never leave you, he'll never abandon you. And especially when you don't feel his presence or experience his presence, knowing he's there is pivotal and key and foundational to having more God encounters and more God experiences. And I'll, I'll teach you just in a minute how to do that. But it's also very, very important to remember that he wants you to have encounters with him and intimacy with him and experiences with him even more than you do. After all, he paid the price for that, didn't he? When we weren't interested in even knowing him, let alone in, in, in having uh, experiences and encounters and intimacy with him, he gave us the gift of his son absolutely to pay the price for our sins and so that we might have eternal life and never go to hell, go to heaven straight from this realm. But remember, that's what he did for us at the cross. It's important that we remember why he did it, because he wanted relationship. He wanted experience. He wanted encounters with you. So he paid the price to bring you back into relationship with him. Not only a saving knowledge, and absolutely he's done that, but it, through that saving knowledge, relationship with him for all eternity in heaven, absolutely, and on the new earth when all of the, the revelation stuff happens, but he wants that deep intimacy with you now. He wants you to be aware that he's always there and that he always wants encounters with you. That's foundational to increasing this, this realm of divine intimacy and growing in more and more God encounters and God experience. So here's the key. Practice the presence. If you know that he's there, if you're willing to agree with eternal truth, and of simply two scriptures, and there's so many more, but I'm highlighting again, Hebrews 13, 5, for he himself has said, God himself has declared to you, um, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That means he's with you. He's with you right now as you're watching this. He's with you right now, cheering you on, hoping you get this because he wants to, he wants more encounters and experiences with you. And he wants those, he wants you to have those with him. And then Matthew 28, 20, and behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. He's always there. He's always with you. So how do we grow and establish this realm of divine intimacy so that it becomes simple to encounter and experience him by agreeing with eternal truth in the midst of temporary circumstances? That What's the temporary circumstance? Well, it doesn't look or feel like he's there. I'm not getting the tingles. I'm not having the gold dust. I'm not having the lights flash or the heavenly winds blow as the realms overlap. I am not experiencing him with my five senses right now. Okay. That's a fact, but facts change, truth does not. The truth is, the fact is you're not tangibly experiencing him. The truth is he's right there with you, just as present, just as real, just as experienceable and encounterable as when you do feel him. So how do we establish the divine realm? By practicing the presence. For me, it's as simple as I will sit in my prayer chair often and simply say, Father, thank you that you're there. Thank you that you're with me. Thank you that you never leave me nor forsake me. Thank you that you're as real to me right now. You're as present and tangible right now as any of my peak experiences with you. Thank you. That, and I, just, I continue to decree and declare 
in a place of faith, I declare the truth. I agree with the truth. And then we'll do a whole nother uh, supernatural mentoring series uh, teaching on how the substance of our faith works. But very quickly, when you choose to agree with eternal truth over temporary circumstances, that choosing to believe triggers the substance, the Hebrews 11 one substance of your faith that actually works to establish what you already have in Christ in the eternal realm here in the temporal realm. It's one of the main ways we operate as dominion stewards through the substance of our faith. That's why the enemy wants you to think, if I'm not tangibly experiencing God, he's not there. And even more, he wants you declaring that, decreeing that, agreeing with that, murmuring, complaining about that. Because then what you're doing is you're, est you're establishing a realm of not experiencing him as opposed to declaring truth. God, thank you that you're there. Thank you that you're with me. Thank you that you never leave me nor forsake me. Thank you that you're all around me. Thank you that you're filling me. Thank you that you're in me. I'm in you. Oh, God, thank you for divine intimacy. The more and more and more you agree with that in faith. Oh, God, you're not saying, oh, God, I hope you're there. Oh, God, I hope. I no, you are actually accessing and in, 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 in agreeing with the reality of his thereness and his presence. And the more you do, the more the reality of that is established. Many of you know my testimony that I was a mocker and persecutor of Christians for almost for, for most of my adult life. I was 38 and a half years old when the God that I mocked and made fun of sovereignly manifested his presence. And I had an encounter with him where he declared to me, I refuse not to love you over and over and over again. I had another sovereign encounter with him the next day. And I gave my heart to the Lord. He came flooding into me for three hours. I encountered the reality of his presence in the floor of my kitchen in my little cabin in the woods of Montana. For my first year of being a Christian, I regularly encountered the reality of his presence sovereignly and tangibly. Um, and a big part of that was I had been involved in so much who Ooha and nonsense in the spirit before that, that God wanted me to know how exactly how real he was and that he was the one and only true God. And that got very settled and sorted in me in that, that the first few months, let alone the first year. But then when he called me into full time ministry, he blessed me with something that I missed the blessing of at first. He actually, after a year of regularly encountering sovereignly his tangible presence, he blessed me with basically two and a half years of none of that and teaching me to walk by faith and walk by truth. One of the things he taught me to do in that season was exactly what I'm sharing with you. I would sit basically every day. I probably missed a few days here and there, but almost every day I would take time to consciously and in faith agree with truth. Lord, I may not be seeing you or feeling you tangibly in this moment, but I know that you're there. I know, and I would focus on his thereness. I would focus on the certainty of his presence based on his word. And I didn't realize what I was doing was I was, by doing that, the blessing of not feeling or seeing or sensing him, but agreeing with the eternal truth of his word, I was actually establishing through the substance of my faith a realm of divine intimacy that at this point, all I have to do, I'm even, even before I do it, thinking about turning my, my thoughts to him, I can experience his presence. Now, is it always sovereign and tangible and thick? No, but even when it's by faith, I am so certain of it. This realm of divine intimacy is so real to me that simply thinking about him, I come into a place of knowing according to his word almost immediately that he's there. And if I have a glorious, tangible encounter, great. Like right now, I feel tingling all over my body and I'm grateful for it. But again, those tingles don't mean he's more there. Those tingles are just a, a way of making me a little more aware of what is always true, that he's present. So if you want more God encounters, agree with the truth more and more often that God isn't there. Sorry, that God is there, especially when you're not experiencing that presence. You know, you know, Brother Lawrence, the, the monk from, I can't remember if it was the 1500s or 1600s. I've, I've read the book, um, uh, Practicing the Presence of God, a couple times during my Christian walk. And it's been long enough now. I don't remember when it was. But this amazing monk, Brother Lawrence, and people would come to watch him rake leaves, do the dishes, scrub the floor, prune the trees, because the presence of God was on him so profoundly, they would experience a tangible encounter with the presence of God because of the realm of divine intimacy that he walked in. The interesting thing is when you read his book, 
most of the time he was not experiencing that that sovereign tangible realm he was simply doing what we're talking about he would focus on god again and again and again and constantly and continually the reality of god the presence of god no matter what and it became this realm that radiated off of him i experienced this in uh, southeast asia when i had been leading a uh, um, our, our uh, operation extreme love trips in thailand where we would, I would mentor people on how to do miracle and prophetic outreach and ministry to the, the, in, in the bars and the brothels and to the tourists there. And we go out in teams and we'd see God show up in amazing ways. And there we offered one year, we offered an extended trip over into Cambodia for another week. And I had a group of about a dozen people going from, uh, uh, we went from Pattaya to Bangkok and then from Bangkok over to Poi Pat. And on the way to Poi Pat, it's a bus ride. And if you've ever been there, especially in the little vans, the way they drive, is is a little frightening and the traffic situation there is a little crazy so i would often um close my eyes put on worship music because i didn't want to watch all of the traffics on the highway because it would it would make me tense and i would worship god and think about god and so i'm in uh, the one of the rows of seats in the back and i've got a wonderful couple next to me and i'm totally locked in worshiping praising god you know falling asleep in worship then waking back up and praising god and uh, quietly, but simply just to stay focused on God as opposed to the crazy traffic. And um, when we stop for a break to get a snack, bathroom break, all that, as we're getting off the van, this couple that was next to me said, we want that. And I said, you want what? He said, the presence of God was radiating off you so powerfully. How do we get that? And I was like, oh, wow, I actually wasn't experiencing his presence. I was just worshiping him and focusing on him. But I have created the way God taught me this realm of divine intimacy by focusing on him. I didn't realize that there are times I'm not experiencing the presence, but I know it's there and I'm accessing it by faith, that it's tangibly radiating off me to other people. You can absolutely have that too. I can't promise you 24 hour tangible presence, but I can promise you that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every single month, every single moment, God is there. And as you focus on him, you will create this realm of divine intimacy that makes it easy to come into an encounter with God because you know he's there. And then many times you will have tangible encounters, but think about all the people around you. They're going to experience this tangible presence. What a powerful way to witness when people say, what is that? Because you've established that divine realm of intimacy by focusing on the truth that he's always there. And the more you focus on it in faith, the more it's established, the easier it is for you to encounter him, often by faith, but to really encounter him, believe me. And then that realm opens up and you're carrying that tangible presence in ways you may not even be fully aware of, but oh my gosh, how wonderful it is. So here's how you have more God encounters. You lean into the truth that he's always there to establish that realm of divine intimacy and his presence for you and through you. This is not arrogance. This is not hubris. This is not making God jump through hoops for you and prove that he's there. This is you agreeing with the truth that he is there, especially when you don't feel it, because that's when the substance of your faith, you don't need a lot of faith when you're having the sovereign encounter, right? So when you're not having the sovereign encounter, but you're agreeing with the truth of his word, the sovereign truth of his word that he is there, that's when the substance of your faith kicks in and you work to establish the realm. It's faith, and remember this, it's God's desire. He paid the price. He wanted relationship with you way before you wanted it with him. And he wants the intimacy, encounter, and experience of that relationship even more than you do. So if you want some help with this, I've got a, I've got a couple things. Let me, um, I've got my book. Winning the battle for your mind, will, and emotions. That's all about how to conquer the lies of the enemy and the confusion of the flesh to live in the more of God that we've already been given through the finished work of the cross, the empty tomb, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. This will really teach you how to do exactly what we're talking about, how to agree with eternal truth in the midst of often 
challenging circumstances. It'll help unlock the supernatural, the God-designed supernatural power of your mind, will, and emotions to establish these realms of what we have in our lives and through our lives on the earth. The other thing I'd recommend is check out our glory school or even, hey, bring me in and we'll teach a glory school at your church or your ministry or whatever, because that's all about the same thing. It's about knowing what we have and how to access it by faith and seeing established in our life and in the earth. So thanks for being with me for this episode of the Supernatural Mentoring Series. I'm excited to hear your testimonies about how you co-labor with Holy Spirit in faith to establish this realm of divine intimacy so you have more God encounters and more God experiences. If you're hungry for more of the supernatural, you don't have to wait for the next Supernatural Mentoring Series video. I recommend you go and get a copy of my new book, Realms of Power, Operating in Untapped Dimensions of Holy Spirit Power Today. You can get it through roberthotchkin.com, amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com. You can go to your local bookstore, and if they don't have it on the shelf, they'll order it in for you. And if you happen to like eBooks, well, you can get a Kindle edition from Amazon, or you can get an iBook edition from Apple Books. But anywhere in the world, you can get a copy, either a hard copy or a, a, a digital copy, an, an ebook copy of Realms of Power. And it'll open up 12 different supernatural realms of power in the Holy Spirit to you. Every single chapter is another, it's about another realm, shows you scripturally what you have and gives you keys on how to begin to move in it. So you can start establishing these realms in your life and in the earth through your life. There are things like the power of faith, the power to work miracles, um, the power to shift atmosphere, the power of tongues, the power of decree, the power to create wealth, and so much more. Get your copy of Realms of Power and start moving in the supernatural aspects of your Christian faith today.